Hello friends, welcome back. In this tutorial, we will study about various file allocation methods. One of the file allocation method is contiguous allocation. And this method requires that each file occupy a set of contiguous blocks on the disk. If a file is n blocks long and it starts at location B, then it will occupy the blocks B, B plus 1, B plus 2 and so on up to B plus N minus 1. In this method, the directory entry for each file indicates the address of the starting block and the length of the area, that is in terms of block units, allocated for that file. Both sequential and uh, direct access methods can be supported by the contiguous allocation. Contiguous allocation method has some problems. First one is uh, one of the difficulties in uh, finding free space for a new file. Suppose you want to create a new file and this new file needs uh, 10 blocks. Then in this method, first of all, uh, what you need to do, you need to search 10 contiguous free blocks. First of all, uh, one uh, difficulty which you will face in creating a new file is uh, that uh, you will have to search 10 free contiguous blocks. Another uh, uh, another problem with the contiguous allocation is of external fragmentation. As files are allocated and deleted, the free disk space is broken into pieces. Another method of file allocation is linked allocation. In this method, each file is a linked list of disk blocks. Uh, the disk blocks may be scattered anywhere on the disk. Right, the disk blocks may be scattered anywhere on the disk. Each block contains a pointer to the text block. Each directory entry contains a pointer to the first and last block of the file. Now, it will be clear after this example. See this example. For example, there is a file and this file has five blocks. Right, and it starts at block 9 and continue to block 16, then block 1, then block 10, and finally to block 25. So the directory entry of uh, this file right, uh, will contain a pointer to the starting block. It will contain a pointer to the first block, that is block number 9. And directory entry will also contain a pointer to the last block, that is the block number 25. Block number 9 will contain a pointer to the next block of the file that is block number 16 block number 16 will contain a pointer to the next block of the file that is block number one block one will contain a pointer to the block 10 and block 10 will contain a pointer to the block 25 and directory entry directory entry will contain a pointer to the starting block that is block number nine and a uh, pointer to the last block of the file that is block number 25 now another method of file allocation is indexed allocation now what happens in this allocation method in this allocation method each file has its own index block and the ith entry in the index block points to the ith block of the file and uh, in this case uh, the directory contains the address of the index block so to find and read the ith block of a file we use the pointer in the ith index block entry. So it will be clear after this example. Let us see. Suppose uh, there is a file, right? Suppose there is a file and uh, its index block is block number 90, right? So in this case, what happened? The directory entry will contain a pointer to the index block. It means it will contain a pointer to the block number 19, which is the index block of the file. And the index block, the first entry, will contain a pointer to the first block of the file. Second entry will contain a pointer to the second block of the file, and so on. 